I don't often contradict teachers, but I think if you say to me, look, children don't need to know number facts, I'm going to say, well, I'm sorry, I just disagree with you. I think it's a mistake to think that students should just explore patterns and look at numbers. I, explore patterns, yes, of course, students should explore patterns, but it doesn't end there. The student, that should lead to strategies and that should lead to memorization of facts. So that if you ask a student before they get into high school, what is six times seven? They're not fishing around for the answer. They're going, it's 42, it's obvious. G'day teachers, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Professor Pete's Classroom. In this video, I'm going to make some comments on the consultation curriculum that has been pr proposed by ACARA for 2022. ACARA has sought feedback from teachers, principals, education specialists, and members of the public. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm preparing, presenting this as a video um, because I've got some points that I'd like to raise with you and um, start a conversation and see if you agree with the things that I'm saying. I'm hoping you might put in a submission yourself about what you think of the curriculum um, and that you might adopt some of the um, points that I raise here, assuming that you agree. So I want to look at the consultative review process that ACARA has adopted. This slide is um, quoted directly from the documents provided by ACARA about how the curriculum was uh, published, the process that went into its production. And this is what it says. Some of the work has included 18 reference groups of around 360 practicing teachers and curriculum specialists. That's a lot of work a lot of reference groups. This has cost a lot of money, we should say, taxpayers' money, to produce what is meant to be the be-all and end-all of uh, a maths curriculum for the next, well, I don't know how long they're, they're proposing, but the last one has lasted 12 years, so um, or nearly 12 years. So presumably for another decade or so, um, that, that's what this has gone into. A program of research benchmarking the Australian curriculum against the curricula of Singapore, Finland, British Columbia and New Zealand. We'll come back to that. Feedback from states and territories on the effectiveness of the Australian curriculum in an informal listening tour, listen to this, of 24 primary schools from each sector in each jurisdiction to talk to teachers and principals. Engaging with national teacher and principal professional associations and subject matter experts and reviewing the latest national and international developments and research in each learning area. So this is not just for mathematics, this is for all the curriculum areas, but we're particularly interested in this video in mathematics from foundation to year six. This is like the executive summary for this video, so if you're not going to watch the whole video, just uh, this part will, be, will highlight my particular um, feedback and concerns that I have. On a positive side, Australia should monitor its competitors and partners to see how education systems achieve their goals. That's a very good thing. We've got competitors and partners in different countries that we trade with. We ought to see what they're doing with their students to see if we can improve what we offer. That's an entirely positive process. I'm pleased to see that it's happening this way. So we're not a dictatorship. We're, yeah, so... On the negative side, two big democracies who have similar values, similar um, cultures, I would say, to Australia, the USA and the UK have both been left out. Why those two countries are left out, I don't know. I, it's not difficult to find the, the curriculum documents that they use. I'm going to show you some examples from their documents coming up. I just don't know why they have been left out. And British Columbia and New Zealand are small jurisdictions. There's not much more to say about it than that. British Columbia isn't even a country. It's a province of Canada. It's part of the Commonwealth, but why not, if there is such a document as the Curriculum for Canada, and I don't think there is, and that'll be why it's British Columbia only, but it just seems strange that it's only one of the provinces. I don't know how many they've got over there, but quite a few. And New Zealand is a small country. We love New Zealand. We love Kiwis. We play football with them and against them. And, um, you know, there's a lot of cultural, um, how do we say it? I'm not trying not to offend all the Kiwis in the audience. We love New Zealanders, don't we? Um, but they're a small country. They have more sheep than people. And... 
they're just not a very big country. They're not a big player on the world stage as far as holding themselves up to be an example of how to run an education system, how to write a curriculum. I just, it, it, it's interesting. I mean, they're, they're our closest geographical partner and neighbour. Um, maybe that was considered to be enough. I'm not making a big thing about this, but I just think New Zealand, we could have included the USA and the UK before New Zealand. And to my summary statements, there are two of them. The first is whether or not to require number fact memorization is too important to decide on the basis of benchmarking. So in other words, we're not going to poll our competitors and friends around the world and see what they're doing and make a decision based on how many people are doing what with number facts. It's far more important than that would indicate. And I'll come back to that in a moment. And the second thing is that I believe experts in mathematics pedagogy, in other words, teachers, should have a greater influence than academics. First thing to say is I'm really an academic. I'm not a classroom teacher anymore. I was for a long time. Then I went back to university and did two postgrad degrees. Um, classroom teachers should have a much bigger impact on what is decided on what goes in and what's left out of a curriculum than just academics, let me put it that way. So just because you're an expert in mathematics or you've got a highly theoretical background in curriculum design or something, that's great and we need your expertise in deciding what should be in the curriculum. But ultimately, classroom teachers should have a really big influence on what goes in and what is left out. Now to my main point, which is about how number facts are handled in the curriculum. We have two competing systems. There's, there isn't really an easier way to, of saying it than that, I think. On the one hand, we have the traditionalists who say that number facts should be memorised by rote and that students should all learn to recite their number facts until they know them all and that way they'll have all the foundations that they need in place before they start doing more important maths and you know so on, so on, so forth. On the other hand, we have people who say Memorization is old hat, it's old school, it's old fashioned, it shouldn't be done anymore. We've got calculators for goodness sake and students should be taught to explore the patterns in numbers and see what, how the numbers go together and if they get stuck, well, it never really, no one really describes what should happen if a child gets stuck. But I can tell you what happens from the, my classroom experience, that is they'll use a calculator or a chart on the wall. Either way, they are not able to draw on knowledge of number facts, like six threes are 18. If they don't know that, they start going, well, I don't know, I'm gonna count on fingers, I'm gonna use a chart on the wall, or I'm going to use a calculator or a digital device. Now, somewhere between those two positions, I think is the best path that we should follow. It's not about rote learning and it's not about just exploring patterns and hoping that by osmosis we'll learn number facts. We should have students explore the number patterns. We should have them um, engage in playing with the numbers and seeing what happens when you combine different numbers. Like, for example, adding nine. Adding nine is not difficult if you use a strategy which says this is almost 10. So nine plus six would be the same as 10 plus 5, which is 15, which is an easy place value fact. That sort of knowledge is something that students should have memorized so that they can draw on it when they need it, rather than having to reinvent this, the pattern and revisit the pattern in order to say, oh, 9 plus 6, hang on, I've got to move 1 to make 10, and then that leaves 5. That's too slow. We need students to have memorized number facts. Now, to put this in context, the previous curriculum for Australia said that year three students will recall, which implies memorization, all the addition and subtraction facts. And they will recall all the easier multiplication and division facts, the ones, twos, fives, and tens. And then in year four, they will recall, which implies memorization, all the multiplication and division facts up to 10 times 10. We could quibble over the finer details and what exactly we're, we're, how far we're going with this. I would say leave the tens out. We don't need them. We can go to nine. We should include zero. But be that as it may, it basically said memorization is an important 
foundation that students will learn in the maths curriculum in Australia. It's in Year 3 and Year 4 and we have to get that done so that when students are in Year 5 and 6 and beyond they can build on that knowledge and do far more interesting and important mathematics. The thing that I'm getting a little emotional about is that in the new proposed curriculum for 2022 those uh, topics have disappeared. It's a little bit sneaky the way they've, um, they sort of look like they're almost there, but they're not really, and we're going to have a look at it. So, let's return to benchmarking, and we're going to look at Singapore. In Singapore, students in primary one will commit number facts to memory. This is addition and subtraction facts within 20. It says they're going to use strategies first, count on, count back, make 10, subtract from 10, that's the sort of strategy I was describing just now. Those are really important learning tools, but they will commit number facts to memory. They will memorize the number facts. That's important. At primary level two, they will achieve mastery of addition and subtraction facts. That's a level above committing number facts to memory, apparently. And I would suggest that mastery means they can get answers quickly, reliably, on the spot, whenever they're asked for it. They've mastered it. They're not fishing around for strategies and looking for other ways to find the answer. They just know the answer. There's a reason Singapore's education system is so highly regarded and they get such good results. Um, one of them is the, the pure diligence that they um, expect their students to exhibit. All right, that's a, really a side issue. At primary two, as well as achieve mastery of addition and subtraction basic facts, we have multiplication tables. It doesn't say what to do with them, but the implication is that they're going to be learning them. Multiplication tables of two, three, four, five, and ten, slightly different list from what we had in Australia. And the other statement for primary two is achieve mastery of multiplication and division facts by using fact cards. It doesn't say memorize, but it's the clear implication is that the students will memorize them. If they're using fact cards and they've mastered the facts, then if you have a question like three times seven equals and that's on a fact card, the implication is that the students will have to know what the answer is and, and uh, provide it quickly. And then at primary three, multiplication tables of six, seven, eight and, a no, eight and nine, and again, achieving mastery of multiplication and division facts. So we can see that in Singapore, students are expected to memorize their number facts. Finland, often regarded as a leader in the education field, they get good results in comparative um, maths tests. Here we have, um, in grade one and two, I was fishing around for mentions of number facts in these different curriculum documents. Uh, in Finland, they examine the properties of numbers such as parity, multiples, and division by two. The pupils become acquainted with the decompositions of numbers from one to ten. They're going to explore numbers, and it's only numbers one to ten, so it's not really going very far. But in the other column, it says the students are guided to understand the concept of multiplication through concrete examples, and they learn the multiplication tables of one to five and ten. So again, they're learning the multiplication tables. And then in grades three to six, the pupils learn their six to seven multiplication tables. And again, we have mastery of multiplication tables included. So in Finland, we can say they're going to memorize their number facts. British Columbia. It says at grade three level, students should be able to recall addition facts to 20. So that's good. That's memorizing number facts. But then it says memorization of multiplication and division facts is not intended for this level. So you think, okay, maybe they're going to wait for another year. Notice for year four, sorry, grade four and grade five, it also says memorization of multiplication and division facts is not intended for this level. They've said it three times. They're really trying to make a point here. We're not going to ask our students to memorize number facts. As I've said before, I think that's a mistake. But that's what British Columbia's example shows us. In the addition and subtraction area, however, they are memorizing number facts. Grade fours have opportunities for authentic practice building on previous grade level addition and subtraction facts. And interestingly, they do the same thing at grade five level. I'm not quite sure why they keep repeating themselves. 
I'm not sure why they are favouring the, the knowledge of addition and subtraction facts, but not multiplication and division. You could argue that they're more difficult, but that's not really a good enough reason not to do it. But anyway, that's British Columbia. New Zealand, there's really not much to go on. I love New Zealanders, but really, guys, you should put some more oomph into your curriculum. Recognise the usefulness of just knowing combinations to 10. They are useful. Yes, you should, <laughs> but recognise the usefulness. It's like the child will be asked, do you think it's useful that you know combinations to 10? And the child says, oh, yes, I agree with that. <laughs> but it doesn't say they will actually have to know the combinations. They just have to recognise that they're useful. It, I'm being a little bit flippant, but I think the language could be tightened up considerably. This is at level one and use an if I know this, then I know that approach to solving number problems. That's a strategy. If you know one fact, you can build on it to find another fact, but it doesn't go any further than that. And then all of a sudden at level three, two years later, learn the basic multiplication facts. So that's good. However, it says basic, so I don't know which ones they mean. Does that mean just the easy ones? Ones, twos, fives and tens? I don't know, it needs spelling out, it needs far more detail. As I mentioned before, these are the four jurisdictions. It can't say four countries because British Columbia is a province of Canada and not a country. These four jurisdictions are the only ones that Australia has benchmarked the curriculum against. I think it's a shame that they haven't included the USA and the UK, as I said before. In the US, in grade two, it says students by the end of grade two will know from memory all sums of two one-digit numbers. You cannot make it much clearer than that. By the end of grade three, know from memory all products, products of two one-digit numbers. So in other words, addition and subtraction in grade two, multiplication and division in grade three, up to nine, because 10 is place value. We don't need to memorize those as specific facts. It's very, very clear. It's very um, specific. And I think it, it is, it's, a, it's a signal that the American authorities to put together the Common Core curriculum documents uh, the importance that they placed on knowing number facts in all four operations. In England, it's a little bit more spread out, but in years two, three, and four, we can see we've got year twos recalling and using addition and subtraction facts to 20. We've got them recalling and using multiplication and division facts for the two, five, and 10 tables. Then at year three, recall and use multiplication and division facts for the three, four, and eight tables. And then year four, so they spread it out over three years, memorize the multiplication tables up to and including the 12th multiplication table. That's tradition to say we're going to go all the way to 12. But the fact is that in the US and the UK, they both specify that students will be able to recall number facts. Australia is going down a different path by saying that we don't actually re require our students to memorize number facts. I don't have time in this video, I'm up to 13 minutes already. I don't have time to spell out why I think memorization of number facts is important. You may disagree with me, I'm sorry if you do. Um, I think you're wrong and I'll just say that up front. I, I, I believe this so strongly that I, I don't often contradict teachers but I think if you say to me, look, Children don't need to know number facts. I'm going to say, well, I'm sorry, I just disagree with you. I think it's a mistake to think that students should just explore patterns and look at numbers. I, explore patterns, yes, of course, students should explore patterns, but it doesn't end there. The student, that should lead to strategies and that should lead to memorization of facts. So that if you ask a student before they get into high school, what is six times seven? They're not fishing around for the answer. They're going, it's 42, it's obvious. That frees us up to know many other things. Let's have a look at the Australian curriculum for 2022. I've dated it 2021 because we're still in the consultation phase. This is what it says for year twos. Model situations, including money transactions and solve problems involving addition and subtraction of two digit numbers using blah, 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 efficient strategies. There's no memorization of number facts. There's no recall of number facts. Now, there never was in year, th year two previously. It didn't say students had to memorize number facts until year three. It's still not there in year two. Year three, 
Recognize and explain patterns in basic addition facts up to 10 plus 10 and related subtraction facts. Recognize and explain patterns in addition and subtraction. Recognize and explain patterns. So there are patterns. Children can recognize patterns. We can find even numbers in the multiples of two and oh, this is addition and subtraction. We can find even numbers in doubles. Double three, double six, double eight, double nine. There are patterns. That's great. Recognize and explain. We can do that. Nothing about memorizing. What is a student going to do when they they need to know what is eight plus three and they're at the level of recognize and explain patterns? Patterns are great. I love it. Mathematical thinking is important. Children have to develop concepts of mathematics they have to be able to recognize patterns in the numbers but at the end of the day they're going to need to know the fact 8 plus 3 is 11 and you get that because you've memorized it not because you can find your way to the solution because and you know this is true teachers I'm sure you, I'm I'm so passionate about this I apologize if I'm offending anybody I don't want to offend anybody but 8 plus 3 is 11. If a student doesn't know it, you can just about guarantee a student will count on their fingers. 9, 10, 11. And what does that tell you? They don't know the number facts and they're ignoring the patterns they know. All well, these wonderful patterns we're spending our time on. They're using their fingers. And 8 plus 3 is 11 isn't too difficult. What about 8 plus 6? Oh, 8 plus 6. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. How far can you continue that, students? And why aren't we including memorization of number facts? I'm sorry, I'm going to just say it flatly. I think this is a grave mistake in the Australian curriculum mathematics for 2022. And the memorization of number facts should be put back in there. Academics may not agree with it. Subject matter experts may not agree with it. But I think most classroom teachers will agree with it. Because they know that students are floundering because they don't know number facts. The ones who don't know number facts are floundering. And thankfully, at the moment, we're required to teach so that students do memorize their number facts. But if this new curriculum goes through, as I suspect it will, if we don't speak up about it, we're going to have a, a generation of students who just don't know number facts at all. It's just gone. And that international benchmarking that we looked at, we're going to fall behind countries like the USA and the US, uh, sorry, USA and the UK and Singapore and Finland who are asking their students to memorize number facts. Anyway, year four, it's important that we look at this one. I looked for the word recall in the new curriculum. Recall, memorization, what are we asking students to recall? I found it appears in two places, only two places in the whole curriculum. So we're not doing a lot of memorizing, that's for sure. Year four, recognize, recall, hooray, and explain patterns in basic multiplication facts up to 10 times 10 and related division facts. Recognize, recall, and explain, not the facts, doesn't say recall the facts, the patterns in the basic multiplication facts up to 10 times 10 and related division facts. This is a mistake. This, this is a mistake. There's no way around it. Students shouldn't be memorizing patterns. They should be memorizing the number facts. Someone needs to clarify the language in this statement and say students are going to recall number facts, specify which number facts, how big the numbers are, that sort of thing. But it should say recall number facts. This is the last example. And this is a really interesting one. This is about problem solving. Use estimation and rounding to check and explain the reasonableness of solutions to problems, including purchases and the calculation of change to the nearest five cents is problem solving by recalling and applying number facts. How are they going to do that, curriculum writers? You haven't told us that they're going to be recalling any number facts at all. They're not going to be memorizing number facts. And now you're saying they're going to solve problems by recalling and applying number facts and routing results or calculations where appropriate. I don't mean to be too passionate, too angry at curriculum writers, but seriously, guys, if you're going to say recalling and applying number facts, then you need to decide if it's in or out. And my vote is to say, let's put it back in again. 
So I suspect that the curriculum writers didn't realise that they'd said it would involve recalling and applying number facts and I am um, gravely concerned that someone would simply delete that part and it won't say re recall number facts and it won't say apply. In fact, they'll, they'll have to get rid of the applying as well and they'll have to get rid of number facts because if you say applying number facts, that implies people actually know what the number facts are. Whew. So, where are we up to? Benchmarking, good. Leaving out number facts, very, very bad. I feel so strongly about this. I'm not normally as passionate as this when I do my videos. Um, I apologize again for a second time if I've offended you, if I've upset you by speaking strongly about what I believe about number facts. I'm sorry. I don't mean to cause any offense. But I believe passionately that students have to know their number facts. It's not just because I'm old, not because I've got gray hair and I'm retired out of the classroom, but because I care for the students who are in school. I've got five grandchildren who are just starting to make their way into school. I want them to have the best possible preparation for adult life. And in mathematics, number facts is an important part of that. We should develop strategies. <coughs> students should, as it says, they should recognize and explain patterns in basic number facts. They should find the patterns. They should do posters about the patterns. They should do charts and diagrams and models and explain it to other people and talk about all the patterns they can find and then they should memorize them. They should learn strategies to help them memorize number facts that, they, that, that, that are not completely known. They haven't mastered them yet to use a language that they're using in other countries. But ultimately they have to master them. So just pick an example, it's a hard one, 6 times 9 is 54. If you don't know 6 times 9, and all you know is patterns, and you know about exploring the patterns in the numbers and blah, 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 you're going to be floundering when it comes to 6 times 9, and you won't be able to answer the questions. Just briefly, why are number facts so important? Where do they relate to the rest of the curriculum? They relate to the curriculum, of course, in the area of computation. Anything at all with calculating in any of the four operations will be faster and more efficient and get you the correct answer more often if you've memorized the number facts. And the other huge area is fractions. Multiplication facts are important for fractions. To be able to handle fractions and find equivalent fractions and convert improper fractions to mixed numbers and vice versa, there's a huge swathe of topics in the fractions area, which I'll come to in, in another video. Students have to know their number facts. They have to memorize the number facts. We can use the word recall if you insist, but recall implies that you've memorized the number facts. I'm done. I'm exhausted. <laughs> so teachers, let me encourage you to have your say with the new curriculum. Um, it's important that we speak up. It's important that classroom practitioners put their hands up and say, this is what I think. This is what I have observed in teaching my own students. This is what works in my classroom. This is what doesn't work. And these are the important points that we, we need to see. Recognize that the curriculum has the weight of legislation behind it. Once we have a curriculum, the statements that are in the content descriptors, which is the ones we're talking about here, become law. You are required to teach what's at, whatever's in the content descriptors by law in Australia. No matter which curriculum you use, which, which maths curriculum scheme you're using, which resources you're using, you have to meet the expectations that are stipulated in the content descriptors in the curriculum. Um, if you want to say at all about what goes into that document, as I said, for the next 10 or 12 years, potentially, or maybe even longer, then I urge you to put your hand up and provide a feedback response to the writers of the curriculum. That's it for this video. I hope it's been useful to you. I hope that it's provoked thought and possibly even arguments from you. Um, please leave a comment below the video. I'd love to hear what you think. And I look forward to talking to you in future videos. Do click the subscribe button 
and leave a comment and leave a like if you feel that way inclined or a dislike if you don't. And uh, I'll talk to you in a future video. For now, that's it for me. Bye.